kind of bridge of spirits walkthrough, so we are going to be doing Koshi's, Koshi's Toshi's Regret. And this will be the final mask, and as a result, the final kind of section of the game. So this is the mask maker path, and we have a new dash ability, and we make like a spirit bubble, and then we get to dash through stuff. So this dash ability is extremely helpful, it's gonna make a lot of combat much easier, and it seems to stun pretty much every enemy that you hit with it. And this is kind of the point in this game, you should have a decent amount of upgrades, a decent amount of health by now. And the game really shouldn't be getting too difficult, at least compared to the earlier stuff, it should be feeling a little easier by now. This box is a challenge box, and we have to defeat all the enemies without getting hit. So there's going to be a couple of the, of the one-hit enemies that we can shoot in the chest, and then a couple of these staff enemies that never really are a problem. And then there's going to spawn this sword guy. He's invisible though, and to deal with the invisible enemies, we are going to want to dash into him, and we're not told this yet. So this is actually me trying to figure out how do I hurt this guy. And whenever a game like this gives you a new ability, you should probably use it. So I tried out a lot of my other abilities and then realized none of that's working. Oh, there we go, we can dash. And look, that did like a third of his health in that hit, so I'm just kind of wondering why on earth wouldn't I just kill him by dashing? I mean, I'm going to do that until he dies. <laughs> so use the dash, abuse it, it's going to help you out a lot. And it's going to make some of the upcoming bosses a little easier too. So I think there's probably... I think there's five bosses left. And the first three of those five are not super difficult. At least I didn't think so. But the final two are pretty dang hard. Okay, in this area there's going to be kind of a staircase down to the left. And then there's going to be some of this rot up here. So there's going to be this mage that actually killed me a few times. Uh, there might be more than one. I guess we'll find out here. Maybe this was just the only one. I don't know. But as I said before, the bosses become regular enemies. So this mage is now a normal enemy. We just have to fight it like a normal thing. And um, we also have to deal with a lot of the other enemies that spawn. So I decided I kind of want to focus on the mage first before the others. And if you're dodging around enough, that shouldn't be too big of a deal to dodge the other creature's attacks. But then right there, that was just an opportunity, and then that was the mage kind of giving me a beam of death. I don't know how you're supposed to correctly avoid that, because if that beam hits you, it will pretty much nearly always insta-kill you. So I'm, I'm probably missing something with this, but if you throw a bomb on her and blow it up, it stuns her. And that's how I ended up dealing with that, so don't run into the bomb, suicide bomber guys. And then there'll be a few more enemies we gotta deal with. If you have been upgrading your arrow capacity, then you should have more than enough arrows to deal with these enemies. And this can be a little annoying because that mage may have taken out a lot of health from you. And now we have to deal with this sword guy. So the game's not really getting easier, but they sure are... Uh, trying to just make you suffer, and here I am really close to dying because I did not see that guy. <laughs> I had no idea that that guy was there, and that guy is still alive somehow, so now it's one-on-one -on -one with this idiot. And there was that spirit tier that I was going to use on him, but it just didn't really work. So, like I said, we're going to use dash, or in that case, that heavy attack. And I really do make myself suffer in this game by not using all of the powers given to me. But I get better at it as the game comes to a close. <laughs> There's still maybe a solid hour and maybe 90 minutes left in the game. So it's not like we're near the end, but we are getting there. I mean, it is a smaller game, so it does make sense. And then we're going to want to grab that plant pot with our rot. And we're going to want to let them drag it over here. I forgot to speed this part up. They are a little bit slow. As I have kind of mentioned before, I sort of wish that these guys had more of a role to play in this game. I mean, they are important, obviously. The whole story revolves around them, but I was a sort of hoping for a light version of Pikmin, and we didn't really get that. So a spirit gate's gonna open up, and we're just gonna dash through it like we did to get in here. And now we can start walking up the mountain. Uh, 
There we can see a pretty cool view of where Toshi is, and we just have to collect all of his relics so we can actually get to him. And then there was that water wheel that has some uh, crystals on it that you can shoot, if you so desire. And then there's just going to be more places to wander up here. A few more enemies, and the game lagged super hard for me right there. I don't know if that came across, but my aimer, like I was expecting it to be the normal performance, but then it lagged really hard, and I'm kind of moving my mouse around here to see if it was a one-time thing, and it seemed to have gone away. So the performance of this game what is a little bit odd, and as I've mentioned a million times, I'm sure they're updating it or have already updated it, I don't know. But I also think that my computer is just kind of reaching its age limit uh, for trying to run things maxed out. Another sword guy, we're gonna stun him and then heavy attack him and then dash at him, and I tried to get him dead, it didn't quite get him there. That's okay, we killed him finally. Then that uh, corruption's gonna open up, so we'll just blow that up. And even with um, the new Halo game, Halo Infinite, like, I can't run that game on maxed out settings <laughs> without some lag, so... I, I would buy a new graphics card, usually that's what I do when this starts to happen. But I can't, <laughs> so it's like I'm kind of stuck now. And it's not like there's a major difference between ultra graphics and low in games these days. And I think ultra is probably placebo. I don't think most people are going to notice that difference. But still, it feels good turning everything up to ultra, you know. Alright, more of these platforms that we're going to have to uh, blow up and then move around. So we're going to... Get rid of that first one, then jump up here after getting rid of the second one. We'll want to hit the crystals on both of these. Now we can jump on them. And then we'll want to blow up the third one and then hit that crystal. And now we can jump on this platform. And then there will be a grapple flower. Cool warp on over there. And then we can walk up here. And there's going to be some corruption there. So that you, you need a spirit tier to clear that. So if you want to do that, you can. I don't think I'm going to bother though. So we're going to have another enemy who is invisible, so we'll just bring him into the real world with a dash and then worry about some of the other enemies with a quick uh, heavy attack. And I think I was trying to hit him with that heavy attack. I don't think I was actually trying to hit the stupid enemies, but it didn't work out that way. And that's just how it goes sometimes. This game does feel like it was made for a controller, not so much a mouse and keyboard. <laughs> so it's probably a little easier to aim attacks. Uh, on a control stick, which is always kind of annoying to me, but that's just how it is. And then we're going to get two of these sword guys, and I'm a little cornered here, so I'm going to dash and try to get outside. And that ended up killing one of them, because the dash attack is just so awesome. So is that heavy attack, which you can get with an upgrade. And it's a pretty early upgrade, so you probably have it by now. And then we can clear that corruption and there'll be another gate for us to head to. I'm just going to take a few seconds here, take a look around. There might be this some items. These tools look like the ones he carries. And it looks like there's going to be a mask wisp that we're going to want to follow as well as a chest. So there's that spirit tier, or that forest tier, if you want to go free that shrine further down, but all you get are hat currency out of that, so I don't really care. And then I spent way too long not figuring out what to do here. We just <laughs> throw a bomb and then get the platforms up and quickly dash between the two uh, gates. And I do not think that you can jump and dash. I think I've killed myself doing that, or I just did it totally wrong. So make sure you're on solid ground before you dash, and don't try to dash in mid-air. I don't think it works. Again, maybe I did it wrong. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work, though. Then we can climb up a little bit further up this mountain. Luckily, there is a warp shrine, and we're getting closer to the boss. As we can see on the map, we're getting closer to our uh, destination. I usually cut these out, but here's what a map might look like. All the spirit mail locations, if you've been looking for that sort of thing. So here's the boss arena. So there's going to be... 
a lot of these little pots that we have to put in the right places, and if you put them in the wrong spot, enemies are going to spawn. So we're going to put the mask on, and we'll actually see where the pots go, and we'll tell by the patterns on the pots. I need to match the patterns on the shrines. So I put them all in the wrong places, I sped up this part, and we're just going to fix it. We can just take a look. We need to swap pretty much all of these. And this does take a little while because these little rot buddies of ours are pretty slow. And the Mask Maker boss. So this guy is not really super hard. We are going to abuse the living heck out of our dash ability. And if we can dash into him after he attacks us, we'll stun him for a couple of seconds and be able to get many hits on him. He's going to teleport around, summon some enemies who really aren't too big of a deal. They're just uh, weak ones. But he is going to have a pretty huge lightsaber sword. He's going to teleport to where we're at and uh, keep teleporting at us until he gets some hits off on us. Then he's going to do this sort of weird warping teleporting, and you can knock him out of that by dashing into him. And then we should be able to get more hits, and he's going to send some snowballs at us. We're not really a big deal. More lightsaber, I mean, compared to some of the other bosses we've already fought, and even some of the future ones, he's not really super hard. But he does feel a little like a Kingdom's Heart, Kingdom Hearts boss, that much I have to admit. And you might be able to stun him with a bow and arrow, but uh, we're just going to try to use dash for all of that. He will have that warp attack, and then he'll have this sort of prism attack where he's going to summon a hexagon of walls, and you're just going to have to keep shooting him until you break the glass. That'll stun him for a really long time. And I'm going to make sure I try to keep my health somewhat high. I'll take out a ton of his in turn, though, with that heavy attack. So don't be afraid to abuse your rot powers here. And then I got another one I'm going to throw at him and just try to finish him off. And then pretty soon he'll be dead, and that'll be it for this video. I knew Troshi since he was a boy. Watched him grow into a leader. He cared deeply for our people. Losing so many drove him to do terrible things. <laughs> <laughs> 